Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. This will be our final discussion of the final Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase of the year. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. We've got a good show for you today. We are going to be talking about the news from the week, including the Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase from last week. And then on Thursday, we are going to be talking about licensed games. But in the meantime, Mark, how are you? I'm doing great. I am. Uh, it's weirding me out a little bit. The Daylight Savings Time has passed or is upon us currently. That something Mm, happened with daylight savings time, and now it's dark outside. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel, because we have something to announce regarding the Sonic Forces borrowing program. That's right. So the Sonic... and I mean, is this an exciting development, or is it just that we're doing it again? The Sonic Forces borrowing program, uh, which lay dormant for some time, is now coming back. You can email us uh, at Nintendo Cartridge Society at at gmail.com. Um, and then you can expect to get my copy of Sonic Forces uh, in the mail for Nintendo Switch. You play it for as long as you want. You send it back. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, but there is a twist. Mark, would you like to reveal the twist? So you are signing up for the Sonic Forces borrowing program. And your expectation should be that you are going to receive Patrick's copy of Sonic Forces. But yes. you might occasionally get the Untitled Goose Game instead. The rules of the program remain the same. But you... So you're signing up for Sonic Forces Borrowing Program. Nine times out of ten, you're going to get Sonic Forces Borrowing. You're going to get Sonic Forces. And, but one time out of ten, you're going to get Untitled Goose Game. I mean, I would say it's up. It's like five times in ten, right? <laughs> You're right, like, you're uh, right. Those odds, I t- totally made those up. You just uh, made They're not up. binding. It doesn't <laughs> right. mean anything. <laughs> it's, I mean, if, if this could technically be like a contest, we can't lie to people about their odds. <laughs> the FCC will be jumping down our throat. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what the program is now. It is still the Sonic Forces borrowing program. Sometimes you may accidentally instead get Untitled Goose Game. Um, I will not tell you which one that you're going to get. And no, you may not request. You will just get Sonic Forces. Sonic Forces may, in fact, be the uh, Untitled Goose Game. We should put them in the same box uh, <laughs> because I've got the the old box for Sonic Forces. So you won't even know until you open it up. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, we should definitely do that. <laughs> I love that idea. Uh, great. So that has returned. Um, and then the only other like a uh, little announcement thing that we want to hit today is uh, we've done it. We are to Election Day. Uh, if you have not already voted, please get out and vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Uh, it's incredibly important that we do so. Uh, man, it's I, I, uh, Mark, can you believe that we are here, that time has actually led us to this point, uh, that the election is happening? I can't. I can't. I mean, part of the reason I can't is because w- one of our first, one of our first episodes yes. was uh, right around the election in 2016. So to be here again is crazy. For um, a number of reasons, because that means we've been doing this show for like four years. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing this show a long time. Uh, so we have, you know, kind of been through this before. And, you know, just like uh, like four years ago, um, the episode is not we're not, you know, uh, going on about the election. You know that it's important. You know that uh, if there are people in your life who haven't voted yet and could use some help, that you can be the person to help them do that. Um, you know already that we're probably not going to know uh, the results of the election. Uh, tomorrow night, maybe even not Wednesday night. Uh, so like everyone be patient, preach patience to your, to your friends, to your family. Uh, we will get through this thing. Um, and we, you know, uh, we're, we're not gonna, that's not all this episode is. We've got Nintendo stuff to talk about. Uh, but I just wanted to say it all up front. Uh, and thank you to everyone who did vote already, who helped people, um, who phone bank, text bank, any of that stuff. Um, it's all Good, everyone. Thank you for doing your parts. Uh, uh, Mark, uh, we, we also have an email um, that relates to our uh, last episode where we talked about Mario memories. We have a late 
entrant in the Mario memory uh, uh, pile here. Ooh. Um, so I wanted, I wanted to, this is free. I'm seeking your approval to read <laughs> this late Mario memory. And also let it be known that the subject line of the email is late Mario memory. I will, I think I will allow it. I'm feeling tough, but fair. All right, that's that's good, and I that is how you have ruled. Um, so the, the email is from Brad. Brad writes, just a quick note to share with you guys, uh, since you bring so much joy to my week. Here's a late Mario memory with pictures, uh, so it wouldn't have worked out well on air anyway. Well, too bad, Brad, because we are <laughs> doing it on air. Uh, my girlfriend Beth and I moved in together after college. We l- learned to hone our communication skills and work together by playing games like new super mario brothers and the wonderful lego games she loved our time and my sense of whimsy so much that she agreed to non to non-traditional wedding cakes the mario castle was traditional vanilla then this is the picture uh, of the uh mario wedding cake uh the mario castle is, is traditional vanilla the pipes were chocolate and peanut butter cake the blocks like the question blocks uh were lemon with raspberry and the mushrooms were gluten free cupcakes it was awesome. Been married seven years now with three kids, two of whom already love Mario. Keep the great shows coming, Brad. Thank you, Brad, and congratulations for seven years of marriage. And also, um, I'm glad I'm glad we allowed that one. I think I ruled wisely. That's a great Mario yeah, I, memory. I I I I think you did too. Uh, thank you, Brad. Uh, that's a very nice memory. Uh, it's sort of a a a perhaps counterpoint to all of our uh, Mario nostalgia. We got a question uh, from Mason. Mason writes, Hey guys, I'm I'm emailing because I was curious. Are there any games that are your favorite or have changed your life in a meaningful way? He's talking about like in regard to uh, not not Mario. To me, Earthbound is is my favorite game of all time. When I played it, it changed my entire world. uh, And that game has a special place in my heart. Uh, Mason says, no pressure to answer. Thank you. Um, but Mason, um, I, you should know that any question that gets uh, posed our way, I feel tremendous pressure for us to answer. <laughs> um, but I love that pressure, so let's, uh, let, let's talk about it a little bit. Um, Mark, outside of Mario, is there a game that, uh, you know, uh, what, 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 what other, you know, we've been so focused on Mario. Is there another game or another franchise or something like that? Um, that has a similar has had a similar impact on you. Ooh, okay. I'm I need time to think about it. But while I do that, because you had you had a heads up that this was coming, so I'm going to throw mm-hmm. it to you while I while I ponder. Uh, so Final Fantasies uh, two and three, or four and six, uh, depending on uh, just depending. Um, so yeah, the, the those two games, the Super Nintendo uh, Final Fantasies were. Uh, you know, they changed what I thought games could do. Um, I was not even uh, like aware that a game could tell like a, a complex story or anything like that. I love those characters, Final Fantasy three in particular. Um, you know, it's I have such a hard time playing any other Final Fantasy game because it's not those two games, uh, which I know is unfair and stupid and probably prevents me from playing a lot of fun Final Fantasy games if I could just relax for one second. Um, but, you know, the, the, those games are, are so near and dear to my heart. Um, and those characters are like baked into uh, like ev- everything. Like when, when I think of archetypes of characters or archetypes of relationships, um, I more frequently see them through Final Fantasy two and Final Fantasy three than like any anything else. You know, like they they they're my go to, and uh, I I I feel like I don't talk about them that much. I'm sure other people would disagree and say that I talk about Final Fantasies two and three too much. Um, but I I feel like it's it's something that I keep uh you know kind of turned down to like a a comfortable level for everyone else. Um, but yeah, those the the those for me uh like cha- changed my life. For sure. Yeah. Um, I guess for me, this is only kind of like tangentially Nintendo related. But for me, uh, something that was really important for me in like a weird way ended up being like the Guitar Hero slash like Rock Band games. Totally. Um, yeah. From a really like social perspective, um, you know, I have like so many good memories and making friends through like playing that game for just like hours and hours and hours. Uh, and in a weird way, like gave me a lot of appreciation for music that I otherwise would not have like sought out because it just wasn't something that I was particularly interested in. So in the sense that like, you know, playing those games opened up 
the world of video games to me, probably not so much. But uh, as far as like really bringing back, bringing me back to like specific points in my life, and in like weird ways because of the social connections I made, like uh, redirecting the uh, uh, like direction of my life, I, I think those yeah. games play an important part of it. Social component is huge because I think like my my backup answer there would be the Street Fighter games um, that, uh, you know, I have have played so much on like home consoles and, and online um, and like deciding to get good at various Street Fighter games with um, friends of mine who are also playing them or also just like being a kid, being like a 10 year old kid in the arcade and just playing with strangers um well, a thing that sounds insane to me right now, <laughs> but the the part of that might just be because we've been trapped in our houses for eight months. Um, but uh, yeah, it's I think the uh, the social component is uh, is huge uh, or c- can be a, a really big part of uh, what makes a game so important. But yeah, that's such a good question, Mason. And I would be super curious if other people have games on their mind that they feel like played a really big role in their lives. We'd love to hear about it. Yeah, uh, send us an email, Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. All right, Mark, are you ready to get into what he, what, 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 what what games we've been playing this yeah, week? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Mark Super Mario Pit Cross. I keep playing it. Uh, it is. I'm. Uh, I play it so much that I am mad that it was never localized. <laughs> um, like, it, it is a, a game, and, you know, maybe I wouldn't have liked it when I was a kid, but, like, I, I have spent more time in that game than probably all other games on the Super NES Switch Online combined. Uh, I love it. I wish Super Mario Picross was a game that I had in 1993 or whatever. Um, that, that's a game that would have changed my life, I tell you what. Clearly, it has a lot of content. Yeah, it just keeps going. Um, every every I, I think I mentioned this last week, but every time I uh, clear out like a set of puzzles, I'm like, all right, who did it? Then it's like, here's uh, three more sets of twelve puzzles, and I'm like, I'm never gonna finish this game. That's I I'm so I'm glad you're enjoying it. That's really cool because I remember when it first came out on the SNES online that you liked it, but we're just like, oh, it's kind of you know just like a bare bones um, pick cross game. But it's it seems like it's definitely like sucked you in. I mean, it is still that like it's, but it, it's a uh, it is a responsive pick cross game. Uh, the music and the sounds and the visuals are all um, uh, pleasing enough that it you know lulls me into a sense where I'm like I'll just do a, I'll do a puzzle <laughs> and that'll take me twelve minutes and then I'll be like hmm I that was only twelve minutes I can do another puzzle and then I do that uh, four times mm-hmm. and then an hour has passed and you know that's all there is to it. Um, Mark, I also uh, took the opportunity over the weekend to attend the Animal Crossing New Horizons Halloween oh, event. Oh, how was that? Uh, it, it is like all events in Animal Crossing, all like the one night events, uh, in that it is adorable. Um, you run out of stuff to do pretty quick, um, but uh, you know it's just uh, good, stupid fun. Um, Sarah and I are really getting to the point now where our, uh, you know, you know how like everyone has their favorite. Uh, neighbors on the mm-hmm. island and then there are like a few that you're like Ugh, why is this guy here famously you had huck the frog who you didn't like um we recently got rid of celia uh who is an eagle that neither of us liked <laughs> um but i would say that now nine no eight out of ten of our animal neighbors are like a plus neighbors that we're very excited about. Oh, that's we nice. Got, we got Cookie the dog. We got Cherry the dog. We got uh, <laughs> Ed the horse. We got Roscoe the horse. Um, we got who else? We got we got Judy. We got Sherb. Sherb's a goat. Um, he's great. He's blue. Um, and uh, Fauna. She's a cute fawn. Um, and the, they're they're just amazing. Like it's the, everyone is so cute, and I'm just excited every time we turn the game on now. Um, because I feel like I genuinely like <laughs> these characters. Um, but it was it was fun to see them all in their uh, costumes, which are really only, a, you know, the variation of like four or five different pieces mm-hmm. that they wear. Um, but that they, they ask you for candy and um, you can either give them a piece of candy and then they give you something else. Or uh, you say, no, go ahead and trick me. Uh, and then mostly they just like put face paint on you, right? Oh, it's, okay. It's cute. Um, 
And uh, so you, you uh, through like trading candy, you end up getting lollipops and you can give lollipops to Jack, the czar of Halloween. Um, <laughs> and eventually, uh, you know, Jack, Jack is like, keep giving me lollipops and like eventually you'll get, you'll get some like good stuff. Um, and after a little while, you get his Jack's robes and his pumpkin head. Oh, fun. Uh, and so you put those on and then you talk to your neighbors who all think that you are Jack. And they're like, oh, God, no, don't trick me. Please, Jack, don't trick me. No. <laughs> and then they give you candy, which is adorable because they know that Jack can be, you know, quelled with candy. Um, and uh, and then they're like, wait a minute. That's just Ellers. That's just you. Um, and so it's it, it's cute and adorable. And I love it. Uh, and then we spent, uh, you know, a fair amount of time on Sunday um, de Halloweening the island, which is sad. But, um, you know, it's. I, I, I love these events. Uh, I, I, I want them. It's, it's amazing to me how much like writing and content goes into something that literally only happens for seven hours uh, every year um, from five until midnight. Uh, there's uh, unique music then too and like visuals to say nothing of this character of Jack who like only exists during this time. Uh, it's, it, it's pretty incredible and I was really happy to have participated in it. I'm curious, you know, since they're kind of treating these as a little bit like a live service, right? Like they're, yeah. the the events aren't like necessarily baked into the game. They come with these updates. I would guess that next year, you know, we will cycle through these and they will have similar content, but I'm curious if it will be like exactly the same or if they will make like updates and changes when we get to like Halloween next year. I mean, I, I would assume that there would be, that there would be some changes. Um, remember, uh, Bunny Day got patched uh, after a couple days because, like, oh, the right. frequency of the eggs was, uh, <laughs> that's was, right. was too was high. That's right. Everyone was so mad. Yeah, everyone hated it. <laughs> I mean, Bunny Day. I I, uh, I read a theory that Bunny Day is like a parody of Animal Crossing events, um, and it just doesn't. It just didn't make sense in the release calendar that it was like the first event, um, and so no one could like mm. understand what it was sort of riffing on, um, but. You know, having now participated in the Fourth of July and Halloween, like I get it, I get it now. Um, but yeah, it, it it'll it'll be really interesting to see if these things change or if they add new or different events. Um, you know, like take a year off from Halloween and do something else. Uh, do like a Dia de los Muertos. Like yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's I I feel like especially with the uh, amount of success that Animal Crossing has seen, that like they can keep uh, feeding content into it and people will keep enjoying it. That's interesting about it being about Bunny Day being like a parody because think if like the game had originally released at the end of 2019, like what yep. was intended, you know, it's possible depending on when it was going to be released that you could have gotten this like the two fall festivals, you know, yep. the, the Christmas holiday one. And then I don't know, maybe something, but anyways, you know, like potentially Valentine's Bunny Day would be Day two or, or yeah. yeah, yeah. Like Bunny Day would be three or four events in rather than like the first one that we got. Because it is obnoxious, like it it is too present. Um, the character of Zipper, you know, is someone in a bunny suit. Like it is, it is tongue in cheek, and like it it knows what it's doing. It knows that it's annoying you. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, you know, it it would just be nice to be in on that joke, I guess. Maybe next year, since Jack is the czar of Halloween, Jack mm. won't show up. But like some. Like uh, Anastasia. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly where I was going. I am so glad we got there together. Um, you collect Fabergé eggs. I love it. <laughs> uh, so I've, of course, still been playing Super Mario Sunshine. Um, I don't really have anything more to say about it. I am enjoying it a lot. There are definitely levels where I like bang my head against the wall a little bit, but um, overall, I am enjoying it and choose to continue to play it. When there's other stuff that I want to play that's just kind of like piling up a little bit. Um, now I know that uh, you recently got a new set of Joy-Con. Um, are, are you finding that Mario is um, more responsive? Like I also know that like uh, he didn't feel as kind of like sticky to you before. Are, are the have the new Joy-Con uh, kind of ad addressed that for you, or just the switch from sixty four to Sunshine? Yeah, I think like part of it's the switch from sixty four to Sunshine. Part of it is that, um, yeah, he's not running when I don't want him to anymore, which yeah. is helpful in the platforming. Uh, also, one thing that's interesting, playing 64 and Sunshine back-to-back, -back, um, you know, Mario's movesets are, are different, similar but different. And one yeah. thing in Sunshine 
is that he loves to flip really easily. Like, um, mm-hmm. he, when you, t- like, turn on a dime, like, he immediately is, like, ready to go into a flip. And so it triggers a ton, which is helpful in the sense that so much of Sunshine is vertical, so he's getting a lot of height, but which is, sometimes you're, like, it's just a little much. Like, I don't need you to do this, like, enormous, like, <laughs> yeah, flip. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. just need you to get to the next um, platform. It is interesting how much of Mario Sunshine is just about uh, getting height um, and uh, that Mario has so many different tools to do that. Um, yeah, that's a game that I, I have to get back to, but uh, it'll probably take me a little while because I've started playing Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Um, picked up right where the uh, the demo left off, um, which is nice. Uh, if, if you have any questions about whether you want to play Pikmin 3 Deluxe, Play that demo. It is the beginning of the game. There is it, it is a zero risk uh proposition for you. You won't be replaying anything. Um it's so it's it's just just do it. Um uh and uh yeah, I don't really have anything um new to report about uh Pikmin 3 as I'm not super deep into it. Um but I'm sure I'll be talking about it more uh in weeks to come. Do you think you and Sarah will play co-op? Does she have any interest I, in it? I I I don't know. I I want to get her to try it, um. But it's it, it's always tough, you know, something new, um, to try and convince her to do it, especially uh something like Pikmin Three, which has, like, the control schemes are so weird, um, that like you kind of have to wrap your mind around like a whole different like set of buttons and what you know bumpers and triggers do, and there's also like the motion control element. Like, there's just kind of a lot. Yeah, it looks intimidating. Like, uh, yeah, like yeah. But I am also curious, what like difficulty setting did you choose? Since you had played some, at least some of it before, did you do like the ultra spicy or whatever it's called? No, so I'm playing it on the hard mode, which is the regular mode, basically. The, the two difficulty options uh, from the start are normal and hard, um, and then ultra spicy is the, oh, the one that gotcha. unlocks. Um, but the hard mode... Uh, is the difficulty that it, the game was on the uh, Wii U. Um, so that's sort of like the default difficulty. And normal is uh, easier. It's uh, time passes slower. Um, Interesting. Which uh, is is an appealing feature. And maybe like maybe I'll go back and like play it on easy mode with uh, with Sarah because you know they they're just gonna be more like uh, having to communicate with each other and like you know get frustrated and you don't really yeah. want to do that under under uh, a time constraint. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, handy little tip, the normal mode in, uh, Pikmin 3 Deluxe is the easier, um, like easier than it was originally. Um, but I, I don't think you lose anything from playing it on, on an easier difficulty. Um, and I don't know that I would get anything from playing it on the extra spicy. So, you know, an extra spicy is of course a, uh, reward you get for completing the demo, uh, version as well. Um, all right, so that's what we've been playing this week. Let's get into the new releases and what we might be playing next week. Today, November 3rd, Bakugan Champions of Estroya is released for Switch. Mm-hmm. This is the game that was revealed at the um, at Nintendo Treehouse live stream for Paper Mario The Origami King. And then at the end, they had a reveal trailer for Bakugan Champions of Estroya. This is a series of uh, toys and like a cartoon that um, has passed me by, but uh, it seems yeah, to be we, very we talk about it. We talk about it a little bit more on uh, Thursday's episode, which is already in the can, by the way. Um, so you'll, you'll be hearing us uh, talk a little bit more about that uh, on Thursday, um, but also uh, on today, Tuesday, um, Jurassic World Evolution comes out. Um, the complete edition, uh, which is a game that I threatened to pick up uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and now that I see that it is coming out on the same day as this Bakugan thing, Mark, that's two licensed games coming that out is on, two on the same day. Games. That's right. Um, so that, and two licensed games that are, are like uh, high profile uh, uh, games. Um, so our topic for Thursday is now extra relevant instead of mildly relevant. <laughs> uh, so I, I feel good about that. Um, do either of these games uh, interest you? Jurassic World Evolution, like, uh, I played a lot of, like, Roller Coaster Tycoon and Zoo Tycoon yep. as a kid. And so uh, d- having, like, a Zoo Tycoon type game, but with, ju- like, a Jurassic Park setting is very appealing to me. 
Um, yeah, I, I I tried this game out at E3 two years ago. Um, and I'll tell you what, that is the worst possible environment to try out a sim <laughs> game. Is <laughs> in a room with like 20 other people that are all like trying to figure out. And, you know, like, what, what do you want to do when you've got uh, 12 minutes to play a, a Jurassic World uh, sim game? You want to like release a dinosaur and like have beat <laughs> people, right? Um, so yeah, it's I, I this is one that I uh, think it'd be really fun to like buckle down and like learn uh, and you know build a cool park. And then on Friday, November sixth, uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield plus expansion pass is released. So what this is is the a physical version of Pokemon yes. Sword or Pokemon Shield, and it but it also includes like I I think it's just a download code for the expansion pass there's no price advantage like it just costs what it costs which i think is 90 bucks for the whole thing um but there you which go which is technically it's technically a little bit more like a penny more right that's because right it's <laughs> you're paying <laughs> for the 79.99 right um and also like i gotta say they i hate the way these things are named um because uh it one of them is called pokemon sword and pokemon sword expansion pass and the other one is called Pokemon Shield and Pokemon Shield Expansion Pass. Um, like, there's j- there's no effort to like call these things ultra or complete <laughs> or anything like that. Um, they're just they're just what they are. You got to get the full nomenclature in there. That's true. And then also on November sixth, uh, Tropico Six is going to be releasing on the Nintendo Switch, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that when it comes up in the Partner Showcase. A lot of similar assonance there. On the 6th, Tropico 6 comes to Switch. That's tough to say. You did a very nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Those enunciation (laughs) classes are paying off. Mm -hmm. All right, Mark, uh, those are the new releases. Let's close that out. Now it's time for a regular topic on our show. It is time. Regular topic on our show? That's not how I set this up. Now it's time for a regular segment on the show. It's time for 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, wherein a performer or group of performers didn't play their instruments for 4 minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So, for the duration of one performance, 433, Mark and I will talk about something not at all Nintendo-related, thus fulfilling the contract of the piece uh mark partially inspired by the conversation that we have for thursday's episode we are going to be talking about slash possibly ranking who knows the uh disney afternoon cartoons um so i brought up a list of these cartoons and told you that there are 15 of them and you said what that is shocking to me but also i think we should very quickly explain what the disney afternoon was which was it was a like a block of syndicated cartoons that were all like created by disney so like ducktales chippendale rescue rangers tailspin those all come from the disney afternoon and they cycled in shows every like few years or every few seasons yeah and and it was just a a a way to uh you know it, it was it was the equivalent of um you know the i this isn't right i was gonna say it it was like the equivalent of a tgif or a snick um, but it was just every afternoon. Yeah, I mean, basically, it was like Saturday morning cartoons, except it ran in that yeah. like two o'clock, three o'clock time slot. Yeah, which is great for coming home from school and watching some cartoons. Um, so, Mark, you you named some of the heavy hitters: uh, Ducktales, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, and Tailspin. Uh, all came out in 1990 alongside the Adventures of the Gummy Bears. I could have sworn that Gummy Bears came out earlier, um, but it looks like uh, it premiered in 1990 with the rest of these shows so gummy, th- those are the original four and i i loved um like all of them but gummy bears for whatever reason like i remember being a kid and having a dream where i was like in the world of gummy bears and just whoa yeah but it was like wonderful and that's where i wanted mm-hmm. to be um also it must be noted uh all of the theme songs to these shows bangers every single one yep they're all great um so uh, how, how, how do you want to proceed? Do you want me to tell you the other 11 shows or? I, let, me, let me try to guess some okay. of them. Okay. okay so great. I think uh, Darkwing Duck, right? Mm-hmm. 1991. Um, yeah. Uh, Bonkers? Yeah. Bonkers is 1993. You're missing one between Darkwing Duck and Bonkers. Goof Troop? Goof Troop is 1992. That's correct. Okay. 
Bonkers, uh, Bonkers is a crazy show. It was basically like Who Framed Roger Rabbit was super popular, and so and they're like great, but we can't actually use Roger Rabbit. So it it the this TV show takes place in the world of Toontown, but they had to create like another new character, um, right? Which is called Bonkers, and is uh, it's not very good. Um, Bonkers has uh, Roger's nose. Like his nose is the exact same as Roger Rabbit's. <laughs> um, what what about uh, Darkwing Duck or Goof Troop? I I didn't. So Darkwing Duck, I never really got into. Although I know that's a big oh, one for man. you, right? Yeah, it is. Darkwing Duck is a big one for me, and I there was you know like right on the heels of the Batman animated series uh, of just like a Batman shaped thing, which Darkwing Duck just totally is. It's just uh it's just ducks doing batman um and i i i loved it it's uh unwatchable now but um like i i don't think it aged as well as uh, a lot of the rest of these okay so run me run down the rest of them because i'm i'm really curious what else is on this list 1994 is aladdin 1995 is quack pack and i don't know what quack pack oh, is oh i do know what quack pack is it's um Huey Dewey and Louie but like with 90s attitude Oh, that's a shame. Um, uh, and then 1996 is The Mighty Ducks. Uh, so, so far, that's four duck shows. <laughs> um, uh, 1996, no, that was 1996. Oh, still 1996 is The Lion King's Timon and Pumbaa. Um, and then it says 1997, Gargoyles 1994. So I wonder if Gargoyles just got shuffled into the uh, mm, mm-hmm. in, into this block at, at that point. Um, are you a big Gargoyles guy? I know that they're like that's a, a show that people hold in very high esteem, largely because it has the uh, Star Trek Next Generation cast like all over it. <laughs> yeah, it is a show that has like a, a real cult following. Um, no, I remember years ago when it was on some streaming service, I tried to get into it, but it's one of those shows where I don't think like starting from. I think you need to start from episode one, maybe, but that like it takes yeah. a little while for it to get to the parts where it's like good. It's like Deep Space Nine in that way, where it's like, okay, you have to start with start with the first episodes, that way you know the characters, but it's going to be yeah. a little bit before it actually gets to the part that people like about it. And is heavily serialized, so like you, you need all that uh, background information. Um, in 1997, still, uh, there's a 101 Dalmatians cartoon? No, Don't I don't remember that at all. Mm-mm. Also, why would that come out in 1997? It w- the movie was like re-released in like 91 or something. Yeah, 97 seems Glenn so Close. late. But... Oh, I was gonna no the when they brought the animated one back. Oh, well, I guess we'll never know for sure. Was that all of them? Uh, no, there are two more. Uh, Doug, aka Disney's Doug, and uh, Hercules. Uh, when I don't have anything to say about either either of those, I love the original Doug on Nickelodeon, but the as soon as it moved to Disney, uh, his sleeves were too long or something, and I was like, <laughs> I'm out. We were accompanied today by an ensemble at the Musical Instrument Museum in Phoenix. Mark, let's get into the news. Last week, we got the final Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase of the year. The last one. Um, they made a I've point actually, of saying so. Yeah, yeah. And which is actually kind of cool because, you know, from the very first one, they were like, hey, there's going to be multiple of these through the year. And then we get to the end and they're like, hey, all done. I've grown to really like the partner showcases. Um, I am curious if, I mean, never say never because forever is a really long time. But I'm curious if we will not see like traditional Nintendo, you know, directs going forward because we've gone you know, like nine months without one and things seem to have gone fine. And so... I mean, more more than that, right? Like the the last... uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like a year ago now. Because the one in March was a mini. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Um, I mean, it it, it is interesting that they are keeping the branding, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're still calling it uh, a Nintendo Direct and still calling it a Nintendo Direct mini um, before also branding it with Partner Showcase. So, like... I think we will see direct again, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if we got one. Either we got you know the fabled like January direct um, at, at the beginning of 2021, or even like a uh, uh, December direct or something. Mm. Um, just because you know we w- once we hit um, what what is it that's coming out in December? Fire Emblem, yeah. Um, 
Well, and then we know that uh, uh, new super or Super Mario yeah. 3D World Deluxe 3D World. is coming in February. Yeah, that 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 is true. And I guess you know we've we've gotten more hints about um stuff coming out in February and and March. Um, we're about to talk about about some of them. But you know, like uh, the uh, Monster Hunter um rise, rise. That's right. Um, and that Balan Wonder World. Um, so like we 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 we're we we're, we're getting a, a little bit of a picture. Um, and I think it would just be good for Nintendo to also be like, and here's what we're doing. Um, before we get into what was in the Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase, Ooh. one th- one thing that like I have been anticipating and it hasn't shown up, and so I don't really know what the deal with it is. Other than it's been delayed, clearly. Um, well, I guess can't really be delayed if it never had a release date. But Doom Eternal, uh, I keep expecting oh, to hear yeah. something about it. Haven't yet. Really enjoyed playing Doom 2016 on the Switch when that was released in November of 2017. Um, I'm wondering, and this is pure speculation on my part. I haven't even seen people like, you know, talk discuss it as a potential rumor. But I yeah. wonder if maybe it's it'll be with the like the Nintendo Switch. Pro or Plus or new Nintendo Switch, what that seems to be looming for some time in the like first half of next year, or and this is a possibility that we will discuss a little bit further in the episode. Um, if it is just the streaming version, like if oh, it's just a cloud yeah. version, would would also also be a possibility. Um, and you know, will I should we jump to that right now? Actually, or uh, what, what? What do you want to do here? We yeah, we've hit a a topic of conversation. <laughs> should we steer into it or like you know skid out? Like what well, do we do? Let Let's start up at the top because okay. um you know another game that was promised for tw- or was we were told it was coming in twenty twenty. We were promised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I walked that back real quick. Um, yeah. but that we hadn't heard anything about since March <laughs> was Bravely Default two, and with this uh partner showcase. We finally get an update on the game, um, starting with a long trailer, which so is long. my my favorite type of these RPG trailers, where it's just like random shots of action happening with uh, dialogue that's completely void of any context. Yeah, and yeah, like uh, Patrick pointed out, there was like a part where like people were there was voiceover over actual dialogue in the yeah. trailer. <laughs> Yeah, it's nuts that there's someone like telling you about like these are the asterisk holders, and meanwhile the asterisk holder is speaking, <laughs> and just like who, why, <laughs> why is this happening? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, and I, I don't. Every time we see more of this game, I'm like, oh boy, this is not for me. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because you know, um, a little bit afterwards they released a follow up video talking about the changes that they were making to the game based on the demo. And it was interesting to me that one of the items that they called out as an area where people gave a lot of praise in the feedback form was the graphics, because that is part of the game to me where I do not find it appealing at all. So I I do think that there is an element of the graphical style that is appealing, um, but it's just not in the characters. I think Mm. the characters all look just like atrocious they look like you know uh super deformed uh like action figures everyone looks really plasticky um i'm using super deformed in it's like uh uh proper noun sense here right of uh having like the the enormous heads and tiny little bodies uh, almost funko pop-esque um and uh but like the the backgrounds and the environments uh are like kind of they're nearing That's the true. octopath traveler aesthetic um, what without like fully committing to it, um, and so like I think those look neat and dynamic and cool and stuff, um, but just the the characters look awful to me. We do get the four heroes, like we learn a little bit more about the story of the game. Four heroes on the continent of Excellent. Is that actually how you're supposed to say it? it excellent is how oh, you're supposed to say it. Oof, man, yeah, I thought it's, I it, saw that and I was like, there's no way that can be true. Yeah, it's spelled E X I L L A N T, which is just misspelling for the sake of misspelling. <laughs> like, that's, I don't like it. And then there's also Aster- Asterix Bearers, which um, they have different classes like Vanguard, Bard, Beastmaster, and Gambler. It seems like the yeah. job system is go- going mm-hmm. to be a, plays a really prominent role in the game, which is a, a sort of a standard for the Bravely um, series. Uh, featured in Bravely Default and in uh, Bravely Second. Um, 
and making a return in this one. And then uh, they talk about feedback from the demo that was back in March. They received over 20,000 responses. And the two areas they really talk about where they're going to be tweaking things is the difficulty level um, and then the controls, like doing things like allowing you to turn on auto dash and things like that. It seems like a lot of just like cleaning up. I mean, I do think this is really cool. And I think we saw the same sort of thing with uh, Demon X Machina. And I think it's a good way for these like more niche games to, totally. um, you know, uh, build engender goodwill before release. Yeah, absolutely. And like kind of uh, generate buy in from people who, yeah. uh, you know, played the demo and then like offered them feedback. Um, yeah, this game is coming out February 26th, uh, 2021. Uh, m- my interest in it is now at an all time low. Um, if I ever get like the, or if I look, if three months from now, I'm like, I think I've got to get it. Talk me out of it, Mark. <laughs> that yeah. is your job. Yeah. If, if, if we feel like we want to get it, maybe we can redirect that energy into going further into Octopath Traveler, maybe. But we've already had Octopath Traveler spoiled for us. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, but like you said, February 26, 2021, pre-order is available now um, if you are interested in picking it up. Uh, next, we saw Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town. Uh, leave your life in the city to start a farm in the forest. You can farm, mine, fish, forage, uh, get married, do all that kind of stuff. Comes out March 23rd, 2021. Um, I have Story of Seasons is the uh, like new-ish name for Harvest Moon. Um, it's like yeah. the developers of Harvest Moon, they don't own that like title anymore. And so it is Story of Seasons in the U.S., um it this game looks really cute it looks nice i've been very spoiled by stardew valley and this looks yeah. like you know like a 3d version of what stardew valley does very well um there are they you know they show a little bit of just like the the game in action which is a funny way to describe um a game like this is in action um but like just seeing the the character do things like clearing a like large mm-hmm. field of trees in like one move um uh, and then, like, going back and playing Animal Crossing, I was like, oh, I, I get the appeal here. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the enormous cows in um, They're so Story big. of Seasons. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> they're very the cows are so big. And they're mostly head, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, next, we saw Surviving the Aftermath, which is a real-time strategy game of some kind in, like, a post-apocalyptic setting. Comes out in spring 2021. I've got to admit, I feel like we have seen this ver- like this game um, a lot. Even though it is not like this specific game, I feel like this yeah. is checking a lot of the uh, boxes in indie game releases. Yeah, it's a, a common setting with a predictable color palette. Um, and uh, yeah, it's maybe it'll be fun. Uh, it's, it's always interesting when um nintendo like focuses on one of these things and i guess it's different because it's not a uh, an an indie showcase um or a like proper nintendo direct so you know maybe this is just like a a a deal thing right um that would their partners uh you know paid for this or you know whatever um but it's it I, i feel like nintendo's pretty smart about like what it puts forward as like games you might be interested in um, so I, I wonder if there is more to this game than we're seeing right now. And clearly, I mean, it is very possible that it's just a game that's not for me. And, you know, there no. is. No, no <laughs> such thing. No such thing. There, Because, uh, I mean, speaking of which, next we saw Immortals Phoenix Rising, which is the Ubisoft game coming on December 3rd, 2020. Um, this is the Breath of the Wild-esque game, I would say, that is based on Greek mythology. It looks kind of stunning like it looks like a really good looking game yeah yeah it 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 does um and like you know there's a there's a demo for it on stadia right now this is one that's coming to um all platforms um and it it seems kind of neat uh uh, i remain skeptical of the uh breath of the wild like games like this and genshin impact um just because like there's so much more to breath of the wild than just uh, aesthetic and open world which both those games uh, seem to be borrowing kind of, uh, you know, liberally. Um, 
but yeah, it, so what you, you're you're leading to this uh, saying like speaking of games that might not be for me, um, or are you saying that Phoenix Rising uh, is is not up your alley? Or yeah, is up yeah, your alley? just for whatever reason, like um, it it it's not that appealing to me. I feel this, I feel about this game the same way I felt about Starlink, where um, I'm like, wow, like I am so glad that there's a major developer like Ubisoft that is yeah. making these type of titles. They're cross-platform, you know, like, they are seemingly for all audiences. Um, you know, they Ubisoft seems to be the one that is, like, taking these sort of, like, risks. And I don't know that they always pay off. Like, I don't think Starlink did amazing. I think it probably did best on Nintendo Switch. But I like to see them taking these shots in a way that, you know, like, EA doesn't really. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, this, for, for me, like... Um, uh ubi open world uh is like a a category of game that i'm not really uh interested in um i i will be interested to see um where this one kind of nets out in like how assassin's creed is it how um you know or is it really its own thing um and you know like so, so my my interest remain there's like it's not off but like it, it's pretty dull at this point next we saw a little bit more about bakugan champions of Estroya. Uh, we've brought it up a couple of times. Don't really have anything yep. else to say about it. Uh, next was a game called Griftlands, the Nintendo Switch edition, which uh, it's a deck building roguelike coming in summer 2021. I believe it's already out on PC, if nothing else. It's maybe out on the other consoles. Um, I This is another one that, you know, it checks a lot. It's a little bit like indie game bingo, but this one, you know, like, is more appealing to me. I think the art style is kind of cool. I like the idea of this like deck building road roguelike. Um, so this one I'm a little more interested in. Uh, yeah, it 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 uh, it it seems interesting. Um, it it made it made me think of that uh, it's a game called Card Shark, right? Um, that that is like it's about cheating at cards and about like swindling people. That's that's the card game that I'm I'm interested. Which I understand is nothing like this. But that's <laughs> the one I'm. <laughs> That's the one I'm holding out for. <laughs> well, that that one we saw in the last indie or not indie world, or maybe in either the I last indie been, world yeah. or the um uh, partner showcase. But yeah, yeah, that one also looks very cool. Uh, next up is Tropico Six. So Tropico is a series that I have heard about, but I've never played any of the games. I think of them more as like PC games than console yeah, totally. games. But uh, basically, you are like a the ruler of this banana republic. And um, so it's it's like a uh, like a Sim City. This is how I will describe it based on my understanding. It is yes. like a, a Saints Civilization. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It is like the um, it is the Saints Row to how you got it. <laughs> yeah, you got okay. it. You all got right, it. All right. Using my <laughs> I believe SAT you, you can do it. You can do right. it. So yeah. like as Saints Row is to ga- Grand Theft Auto, so is Tropico to uh Civilization. Sure. There we go. It worked. <laughs> the math checks out. <laughs> also, isn't it absolutely bizarre and this is not a uh like um a new observation, but it is truly bizarre to me that there is a store in the mall where you can buy like uh you know like that's called Banana Republic. Oh, yes. Okay. Why would you yes. call a store Banana Republic? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any right. sense. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, the store's got to be called something. You know, the gap <laughs> is called the gap. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Old Navy? No, yeah. thank you. <laughs> well, next was probably like the most exciting. Pacific Sunwear? Get out of here with that. <laughs> now just packs on, of course. <laughs> um the next was the part that to me was the most exciting and interesting which is that streaming games which had previously you know we had seen it be dabbled with in japan before um were Mm -hmm. being released in the u.s and now which is really cool first we saw a trailer for hitman 3 cloud edition which is coming soon no release date more specific than that then we saw Control Cloud Edition, which is available right now, which is yeah. super unexpected. I mean, just the uh, the streaming streaming games on Switch 
uh, felt very much like because what was it before? Was it just Resident Evil Seven and something th- else? Yeah, so I think the other one was uh, one of the Assassin's Creed game, like Odyssey, maybe, or the one that came yeah. before Odyssey. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, Origins. Um, yeah, uh, it's a uh, it. I I haven't had the opportunity to try it out yet. I don't know if you have, um, but like you can uh, control is available right now. Um, and they make you uh, like play a little bit of it before like committing to uh, spending the money to buy it and play it through this like streaming service. Uh, and I wonder if that's part of just like they want you to understand what it is you're buying access to, and you're probably not... t- to make yeah. sure that your like internet connection is stable enough to play yeah, totally. it. Because from from what I've read online, um, it seems to work very well. Um, and it, you don't need like a blazing fast internet connection to do it. But if your internet connection does drop, like it, the game will basically say like, Hey, you can't play anymore. Like it essentially right. shuts down. One thing that I haven't seen is the pricing on it. One thing that I could find said that it was like, it, it's like a subscription. So you ha- have the subscription for as long as you want, but it's like 40 bucks a month. Maybe mm. I'm not, I'm actually not really clear. That's a lot. Is it though? Like, I don't feel like it. That's that bad for a game that you would be paying sixty bucks for the digital edition, and you wouldn't be able to like sell it anyways. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, forty bucks a month. I guess if you get out of it in less than a month, then then right. you've done something. <laughs> yeah, it, but also like full disclosure, I I'll genuinely have no idea how much this game costs to play. When I was l- looking it up. My understanding was that it's forty, like forty dollars a month, um, you know, and then you just have the subscription for however long you want. But which seems to me, it seems like a fair price. Like I'm willing to pony that up. I downloaded the demo and am excited to check it out. Yeah, me too. Um, this wasn't in the showcase, but a press release accompanying the announcement states that quote, in addition to five hundred five games, uh, U- Ubitus or Ubitus is currently working with numerous industry-leading game developers aiming to bring their best games to the Nintendo Switch shortly. And a logo for Resident Evil 3 cloud version uh, was found on the site the Switch takes you to to play Control, but it was quickly removed. So could Resident Evil 3 being teed up, could Doom Eternal being, being teamed up? Maybe. But I think this is an incredibly exciting um, development. Yeah, I find this to be a medium exciting development um, because uh, game streaming is neat, um, but it does uh, sort of negate one of the uh, like fundamental advantages of the Switch, which is the ability to play it like on the go. Um, I understand that uh, I- I'm in a situation that is not like every Switch owner uh, in that if I want to play Control or Hitman 3 or Resident Evil 3, I have a PlayStation 4 right there that I can play it on. Um, I never leave the house anyway, but even if I was leaving the house, I wouldn't be able to stream this uh, on a uh, plane or on a bus or, um, you know, out at the park or whatever. Um, that the, the the streaming component sort of makes the handheld aspect of the Switch kind of renders it, uh, uh, you know, like pointless. Yeah, that is true. I, I would guess that like, yeah, I think that is true. I guess like theoretically you could tether your phone to your switch or yeah, something make like it that. a hot spot or something but yeah. i have no idea how like well that would work yeah so i mean like the uh, and also you know i uh, i know there are a ton of people that uh have, have only the switch uh people who have been away from games for a while um and have returned to it because of the switch because of breath of the wild or whatever um and are uh you know a, a playing all those nintendo games and want to experience uh these other things and don't want to you know especially with the uh, new consoles coming out, shell out uh, 500 bucks for something that's going to be hard to get your hands on anyway. Um, you know, why not just uh, play the streaming version? I do think it's interesting how like quietly the streaming revolution or how like, yeah. like uh, I don't even know if quietly is the right word, but it's just like, you know, Nintendo didn't seemingly make this sort of thing a priority when they were developing yeah. the Switch. And then suddenly like, the ability to stream these third-party games that otherwise would not be available on Switch just kind of, like, showed up. I don't know. It's There's something exciting about it to me. 
Yeah, totally. I mean, the, the I, I do think you have to look to the fact that there aren't Nintendo games available for streaming yet, um, which, you know, has, has got to like, you know, sort of like tip their hand or their intentions. You know, you're you're not streaming the SNES Switch Online or the uh, NES Switch Online. Those games are, uh, you know, downloaded onto your system. Um, so even the games that they're treating as like, they're sort of like the bonus you get for subscribing to their online service. Uh, you know, it would be easy for them to make those streaming games, right? Um, yeah, but they're, totally. But they're not. I, I guess so. what I feel like is, you know, you have some developers like Bethesda who have put a lot of time and money into porting games to Switch and suddenly like the ability yeah. to get these third party games on Switch. Potentially, I'm sure it is like a significant amount of work, but if I don't know how, how much more work it is than supporting like Stadia or whatever like Amazon's version of it is, like if, it, if the process of bringing it over to like Luna? Is Luna, that right? yes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> So yeah, like I feel like um, if this gains traction, that opens up third parties to switch significantly more than have like p- processing power matters so little at that point. Yeah, totally. Yeah, because all, all all it really needs to do is talk to a a, a server farm somewhere. Yeah. Like that's literally all it needs to do. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this develops, or if it just becomes kind of like a interesting experiment that doesn't like develop into anything else. Yeah, I mean that's that's sort of how I'm. N- not that it won't develop into anything else, um, but just like it seems like a, a, another way to play, like another way to access games, um, which you know you'll uh, hear stories of people being like, oh yeah, I played that on the whatever whatever streaming, um, and it won't like I I don't think that'll ever um, like replace the majority of like where people are playing their games, um, but uh, you know e- ease of access is a big deal. Um, and if you can play a game on the thing you already own, uh, you know, wh- why wouldn't you? Next up was No More Heroes 3, which uh, is coming in 2021. Um, battle to the death on a galactic scale. The game is going to involve something with aliens. Uh, but really the big, we already knew the game was coming in 2021. Really the big announcement here is that No More Heroes and No More Heroes 2 are now available on Switch. Yep. Um, and the trailer for No More Heroes 3 refers to them as the prequels. Um, and Mark, let me ask you, is that how we use the word prequel? <laughs> no, I uh, don't think that really makes sense. I mean, I guess they did come first, but in my head, prequels will always be movie like something that was made after, after the that fact takes place before yeah yeah, M- yeah. As- especially when there's a three in the title of it like if the <laughs> new game was called something else not called no more heroes then i could see the argument for being like oh yeah no more heroes one and two are prequels to this game but no no more heroes three is just the sequel that's it that's all there exactly. is exactly these are just the earlier games in the series yes yes so look let's let's all rein in our use of the word prequel it's weird <laughs> Uh, Mark, how, how how do you feel about uh, No More Heroes and 1 and 2 and 3 all coming out on Switch? I think it makes a lot of sense for the first two games to be available on Switch um, before the third one is released. This is a series I've played the first game. It didn't really do anything for me. Um, and I'm not particularly look, like eagerly anticipating the third game. But I think it's cool that they're all available now. Yeah, if uh, I, I mean, I'm I'm in a similar boat, except that I never played the first one. I'm always like interested in these games, but um, like kind of turned off by the uh, like sense of humor uh, about them. If someone could recommend one of these two games for me to play, um, I would appreciate a recommendation, uh, and then also a justification. Defend yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, email us Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. Next was Part-Time UFO from HAL Laboratories. And Woo! this is a game that... <laughs> I hope listeners could hear that. Um, <laughs> was, uh, Part-Time UFO was a mobile game that, Patrick, I think you picked up and played when it was originally released on mobile a couple of oh, years yeah. ago. And it's now available in an expanded form on Nintendo Switch. It has co-op. It includes more modes like Treasure Island, Tower of Infinity and more, and uh, it was a stealth drop. I think it's like eight bucks on the Switch eShop. That's right. So it, it, that means it is twice as expensive as it was on mobile. Um, you can pick it up for four dollars on on mobile. But 
the fact that it has uh, these sort of like adventure modes where you're like flying around larger arenas looking for treasure and that there's a uh, co-op um, that seems like, I mean, you know what, what, what am I even doing trying to justify an $8 price? It's $8. Like it's, it's great. This is a super fun game. It's adorable. I was just singing the song from it, uh, before it is a, a, a delight. It's hell. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's just such a fun game. Yeah. It looks really cute. It looks very cute. Um, and then last was Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Oh, wait. Sorry, let's go. <laughs> I, I realized you were about to talk about the most exciting game in, the, in this whole presentation, but let's go back to part-time UFO for a second uh, just to talk about what the game is. Um, you play as a, uh, as a UFO uh, with like a, a, a crane. So it's like a crane game mechanic where you're picking up stuff and like trying to stack it. Um, and it's, all, it's just like a series of little challenges. You're doing odd jobs. Um, that's the part-time aspect of the part-time UFO. Um, it, and it's uh, super fun and super cute. And you find yourself, you know, stacking monkeys on either side of a, a elephant balancing on a ball at the circus. Um, it's, it's just a delight. You buy little costumes. You dress up your UFO in like a scarf and a Santa hat. Like it's, it's just wonderful. Am I safe now to move on to Hyrule Warriors? Yeah, you were, okay, I'm so I'm so sorry. It just, <laughs> no, no, I, I'm glad. I'm glad you did. We didn't say what the game was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity. Big reveal is that the demo is now available. You can play all of Chapter One. Your progress carries over to the main game. Um, also, if you were a little bit concerned that the fact that this is kind of being framed as a a prequel, dare we say, to uh, Breath of the Wild, <laughs> Mark, it's appropriate. Um, to Breath of the Wild, that it would maybe not be as crazy as like the original Hyrule Warriors got with like mashing up characters. Even based on just the trailer they showed, I think you can expect this game to get a little bit bonkers. Um, if nothing else, you will have the ability to control all of the divine beasts. Like there is so cool. <laughs> it um, you know, like one of the fun things about uh these like Muso type games is just that. It is that like one versus 100, 1000 like mentality and your character just getting so like insanely powerful that you're able to wipe out like an entire battlefield. And it seems like these divine, the combat with the divine beast is just taking that to an entirely different level. Yeah, I mean, it looked, it looked really cool when they showed off because they showed off all, all four of the divine beasts um, in action. Um, and you know, it's, it's unclear how much of that, like you're controlling or what the actual experience of playing those sections is, but like, what a cool, fun way to like break up, uh, the action in games that can get monotonous if you're playing them for, for kind of a while. I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about this game now. Um, Mark, did you pick up the demo and play it? I have the demo downloaded. This is a, this is one that like, I have a bunch of downloads or downloads that are just waiting for me to kick into them. But Every time I yeah. turn on my Switch, I'm like, ooh, I'm just going to get like one more shine in right. Super Mario Sunshine. Um, so I did play through uh, the entirety of the demo. Um, you know, it, you can play it for like a, about an hour. It is, uh, you know, de decently sized. And just like that Pikmin demo, you know, uh, the, your progress carries over so you won't be playing the same section over again. Although by the end of November, well, it's out November 20th, so I guess it's not that far away. Um, I was about to say, like, maybe I will have forgotten and we'll need to, uh, you know, play those parts again. Um, but uh, it, it, it was really cool. Uh, and, like, I, I was impressed with the way um, the sort of, like, little changes that this game makes to make it feel less uh, like a less kind of, like, uh, mindlessly beat em up, uh, like the way that the Muso games commonly are, um, in that I, I believe all of the encounters are shorter. Um, you know, there, there are, are frequently times when you're jumping into a, a Warriors game where you're like, okay, the timer is set for an hour. Um, I have an hour to complete this battle. And like, that's actually a limiting factor where you're like, oh no, I might not be able to finish this in an hour. Um, I don't think any of the battles, and even, this is just in the first chapter, so it may change as you uh, get later in the game. But I think the longest one I played was like, 12 13 14 I love minutes it. i love it um yeah and then like and so there are like those big encounters and uh which you know are smaller um and then you do uh like small like uh what's the word for like a small battle it starts with like an sc skirmish i want to say skirmish is correct 
SK. <laughs> um, uh, this, so there are a bunch of those that take place in like smaller arenas where you're just sort of like fighting waves of enemies uh, ex- expressly saying like, you need to kill, you know, 50 moblins or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, all, all, of, all, all of those changes feel very like manageable and fun. The three characters you get to play as in the demo are Zelda, Sheik, and Link. They're all fun to control. Um, uh, navigating around on the map of Hyrule is fun and interesting. Um, and you perform like little odd jobs on that map that are sort of your, uh, it, it's sort of a combination between um, like leveling up via a menu and uh, like doing side quests via menu. Um, and that feels like fun and dynamic and sounds like Zelda. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've really enjoyed my time with this demo. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it coming out on the 20th. Yeah, I'm just excited to... I One thing I'm impressed with with this game is just how much it uh, like captures the look and it, of Breath of the Wild, which is obviously like something I really enjoyed. And so I'm excited for an opportunity to go back into that world. Um, there is... <laughs> so this, this isn't a spoiler. It happens right at the beginning of the demo. But uh, we, the game starts at the end of the Calamity. Um, with that little uh, like egg looking uh, guardian, the sort of like baby guardian that we've seen, he time travels back to the beginning of the calamity and then like guides Link and Zelda through the events of, of everything. But I think it's funny that the game is like, oh, you, you, we need like an explanation for why we're experiencing the beginning of the calamity uh, instead of. I don't know, instead of the end of the. Like, I don't know why there's time travel in this, <laughs> but there is. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's a prequel, Mark. It's a prequel, <laughs> and that thus ends the uh, partner showcases for the year. Um, like I said, I feel like all of the showcases have kind of like built on each other. Started with definitely like a rough beginning, but um, totally. by the end, they've just become like a uh, like a regular part of the Nintendo news cadence. You know, you got, like, the Nintendo Direct Mini where Nintendo's going to show off their first-party stuff or, like, their individual Directs like they did for yeah. um, Mario's 35th anniversary. Plus, you got the Indie World Showcase. Now you got these partner showcases. I've enjoyed, you know, like, every couple of weeks having something new to look forward to. Absolutely. The pace of it is a lot more fun than, you know, like, anticipating news for, like, nine months and then just, like, having it all come out at once. Um, I also think it helps uh, both here and in the Indie World showcases when um, Nintendo has such a, like an obvious and explicit partnering with a third party or with an indie developer. Like, you know, it, there can be other interesting announcements in an Indie World showcase, but when there are also like uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer, you know, uh, mm-hmm. the Cadence of Hyrule, um, that that is... That is like a big, that, that, that's a big enough pop to like anchor the thing. And ditto you know, here, Hyrule Warriors, it's a Koei Tecmo game, um, but like it's the Nintendo IP and like part time UFO having um, HAL involved there. Like it's just enough to like push it over the edge from like, here's an interesting collection of third party or indie games to like, here is a Nintendo Direct that is also a partner showcase. Yeah, that's a good point. I also think what I like about it is that it removes the pressure from Nintendo Directs, right? Because it's like, you're, you know, since, you know, September or August, we've had news. I mean, actually earlier than that, probably like June, we've had news every couple of weeks. Like we've had something yeah. new. And so it, it does, it's not that feeling of like, oh my gosh, it's been literally nine months since we've heard anything from Nintendo, which just kind of like as fans, like drives us crazy. Yeah. By the way, we still don't know when that, uh, yeah, Mario 35 Game & Watch is coming out. <laughs> we know when it's coming out, but we don't, there are no pre-orders. Yeah, time is running out, right? We're like yeah, 11 days away, 13th, 10 days away at this yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, okay, so thus endeth the uh, Partner Showcase, but we have a couple of more news tidbits that we want to get through real quick. The first is that the official Super Mario 35th Anniversary Twitter account in Japan revealed that the Super Mario 3D All-Stars game will be getting an update on November 17th, um, this update will include the ability to invert the horizontal and vertical camera controls for all three games, which is something that people have uh, been talking about, like wanting, and definitely have been complaining about with Sunshine. Yeah. Um, so that is a nice addition. I assume that there will potentially be other small like niceties added as well. 
But uh, yeah, kind of weird that they are announcing this like three weeks out. But there you go. <laughs> yep. Good. Good that it's coming. Uh, Nintendo has been on a roll recently, adding new physical rewards to the My Nintendo Rewards program in the U.S. Uh, oh, we've Mark, talked about. I had not the... heard about this. <laughs> I <had laughs> so not... we've talked. What are you doing to me? <laughs> we've talked about the Animal Crossing New Horizons one. Speaking of which, Patrick, how are you enjoying your tote? Are you toting things around with it? Yes, I took it to the liquor store the other day, <laughs> and I filled it with chips and candy. <laughs> Perfect. Your uh, own visit to Nook's Cranny. That's right. Um, so, yeah, we've had physical rewards for Animal Crossing New Horizons, for Mario 3D All-Stars, for Paper Mario, and Splatoon 2. Uh, oh, and Xenoblade Chronicles. But this past week, new rewards were added for Pikmin 3 and Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. For Pikmin 3 Deluxe, there's reusable decorative drinkware decals. So they seem to be mm-hmm. just like stickers, basically, or that you put on your than stickers. They're decals, right. but yeah, that you put on cups. Presumably, you could put them cool. on anything else. I would think. Yeah, it's weird that they are specifying like four cups. Like you couldn't put them on a window or a mirror. <laughs> I think you could if you are brave enough. If you have the platinum points to burn, right? Because like, who knows what'll happen. It is 400 platinum points for the drinkware decals. Um, for Also for 400 platinum points, you can get Pikmin 3 Deluxe Coasters, a set of four. Ooh. And then, I actually don't think they're that nice. Like, uh, oh, okay. I think you could do something really cute with Pikmin. They're not that cute. They just kind of look like the box art or variations on the box art, just like printed on square sure. coasters. Um, and then finally, for 800 platinum points, you can get Mario Kart Live Home Circuit decoration kit which is like stickers and decals and stuff like that that you can use to decorate like the arches and other parts of the uh home circuit kit uh what what do those uh uh decorations look like are they like do they they look like the you know bowser oil or like what whatever those yeah they do they have that like mario kart aesthetic for sure cool cool and um finally last weekend was the halloween themed splatoon 2 like Splatfest, Team Trick versus Team Treat. Uh, Team Trick was the most popular team, 58% to 41%, but Team Treat won both battle categories, making Treat the overall winner, which is actually the same end result as the first time the Splatfest was run back in 2018. Um, that makes me feel hopeful. How does that make you feel? <laughs> feeling, uh, feeling good, feeling good. Yeah, I, I, I prefer uh, treat, treat to Trick. Um, Sure didn't play this one, <laughs> even though no, we've me either. <laughs> All right, Mark, let's get out of the news. All right, that is going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Remember, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts if you like the episode. You can share it on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you share stuff. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell. And the show is at Nincart Society. We also have a Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape Betty. You can get more of his music by going to apebetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying this episode is not a prequel to the next episode. You understand. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Michelle Veray. And I'm Kimberly Trung, and we are the host of Crush Fictionally, a podcast all about your favorite fictional characters from movies, TV shows, and more. Each episode, we pick a theme, curate a list of characters that we love, why we love them, and some fun facts about the people who created them. So if you've ever felt a true connection with a fictional character, tune in to Crush Fictionally on Campfire Media or wherever you find your podcast. Campfire.